so uh, now here comes the interesting part. What we've got to do now is we've got to attach the uh, the little mod region board that we've made um, onto our motherboard. Um, and we're, this is one of the reasons why I wasn't initially that keen on actually showing any of this because um, just about every motherboard I've seen has been different. Um, and when I mean different as in where you have to solder to is different. You see with the likes of your Mega Drives and your Master Systems it's quite easy, you know, pin 16, pin 20, it's always the same sort of thing. Um, with these it's the same um, pins you're looking for. Um, in particular you're looking for the likes of jumper 6, jumper 8, jumper 10 and jumper 12 but where they're going to be is going to vary pretty heavily. Now I've got here two power motherboards. Now one's a model, uh, model 1 and the other one's a model 2. And as you can see, um, they're not even the same size, so they're completely different. Um, now, what I'll do is I'll sort of point out where they are on these two, but to be honest, um, there's heaps of good guides now on the internet, and feel free to write to me and ask if you need some help finding them, but pretty much it's just going to involve you sitting down and just looking for them. Alright, so we're looking here at the bottom of our uh, Model 1 motherboard, and in amongst all this cluster here, very carefully, you'll see that there's um, jumper 6 and jumper 7. Okay, now this is on the back of the motherboard and the rest of the jumpers are actually on the other side, so you've got to work on both sides in this one. And it's really hard to see, but um, again on all the guides and that you'll see these um, zero ohm resistors, but on these motherboards you've got this tiny little track in here instead just joining these two up on jumper 7 here. So what we've got to do is very carefully cut that out and you have to be very careful with this that you don't slip and score one of the other tracks. So you just need to just take your time and eat away. Okay so I've been through and I've got my little track severed and I've checked it with the uh, multimeter and it's um, definitely not connected. So. Basically, looking at this and the, um, the cartridge connector is um, at the top, mm -hmm. right, so this is the bottom of the board down where the um, joystick sockets and that would be, to give you a bit of a, a, bit of a reference here. Right, so that's our jumper 6 and 7, and because they're actually linked, it doesn't matter which one of these you solder to. So from our mod chip, I'm just going to solder on um, our yellow wire. Um, which is going to give it either 5 volts of ground to indicate what region it is. Okay, and that's all we need to do on the bottom of the board. So next up we're going to flip it over and uh, attach to that side. Okay, so the, we're now looking at the top of our Model 1 motherboard and right here where the um, CD-ROM actually gets screwed down onto the motherboard is where we're going to find the rest of our jumpers. Now a lot of the guides I've seen, um, they've got this, you see down here this little chart, um, just there. Um, jumper 13, jumper 12, jumper 11 and jumper 10. So what that's saying is that this one here is jumper 13 and this one here is jumper 12. This one here is jumper 11 and this one here is jumper 10 and again there's none of these uh, zero ohm resistors instead there's a tiny little wire link joining these uh, jump, joining these two up so what we need to do is go through and just very carefully sever these and the way this particular board works on top is the very two far left ones are where our ground comes from and the very far right ones is where our 5 volts coming in so we're just going to sever these two and you're going to put a link joining these two up but again, jumper 13 and jumper 12 are again, they're internally linked, so it actually doesn't matter if you only want to solder to one point, but just to be easy, I'm actually going to solder to the both of them. So I'll just get my uh, knife out again, and I'm um, basically just going to very carefully cut down and through. And if you're doing this at home, um, when you're looking at the board, you'll see these tiny, tiny little traces, um, which is the internal linkage um, for the pins. And that there's some traces that are slightly larger and it's ones that are slightly larger are the ones that we're cutting through. But again, just you know, a bit of common sense, feel free to message me if you're stuck and um, we'll go from there. So I'll just get these split and tested and then we'll get our leads attached.
All right, so I've got the, uh, the track severed. So what I'm gonna do is just to show you where I'm working on, I'm just gonna blob some solder on here, just so you can see a little bit easier. So basically, that one there, that one there, that's gonna be our uh, 12 and 13. And just down here, that's going to be a jumper. There we go, that's the hard part taken care of. Uh, so now we just gotta give it some power and ground. Okay, so as I said, um, just on our power connector here, um, looking at it with the cartridge slot at the top, um, and you can actually use your um, your actual power supply board as a reference, it tells you what these pins are. But the, um, the second pin down is uh, five volts, and the third pin down is ground. Well, actually the third and fourth pins down are both ground. So we just basically just tap onto those and just make sure you put them down as low as possible so our power supply can still sit down over top of it. Okay, so what we're going to hook up now is just our 50-60 hertz switch and on the very back of the motherboard um, you'll see just next to the battery on this particular Model 1 um, there's actually a area here marked switch 4. It's just going to be our green wire for our mod chip. Okay, so now I've got that attached, um, it's just going to be the reset button. Alright, last up we've got to do our reset switch and um, if we look at the, this is where our joystick ports uh, connect into. Um, if you look at the back of the board you can see we've got our, where are we, there we are, our reset switch. And basically what you need to do for this is, um, is attach the white wire to this pin here. And if you follow this trace down, um, we're going to attach the yellow wire in over to here, in this one here. And what we need to do as well is this track that joins these up, we actually need to sever it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this track through here, so it's no longer connected. And that way our mod chip can actually control when the reset switch operates. So I'll just get that severed and then we'll get our wires attached. Okay, so we've got our track severed, so we're just going to blob some solder onto here. And we're just going to attach our white wire in. Things are starting to get a little bit awkward now because um, everything's getting hooked up. So we'll just attach our wire onto that. Okay, and again just follow the, the, uh, the track along and we'll get to our next solder point. Okay, so that's the uh, reset side of it hooked up, and all we need to do is just put our LED in, and then we're finished. Okay, so to fit our LED, the first thing we need to do is we've got to pull the old LED out. So what I'm going to do is just heat this up a bit, and blob some solder on there. Okay, we've probably got enough solder out of there now, so I'm just going to heat this up and just gently rock it out. Okay, so that's our LED out of the way. Um, now we're just going to hot glue a new one in place and hook the wiring up for that. Alright, so just before we put our um, LED down, I've just got to put down some uh, insulation tape just so that it uh, doesn't short out on anything. Just put down a couple of little bits here. And what we want to do is I've gone and got a um, red and green LED and I'm just going to set it where the old one was and then I'm just going to hot glue that in place. Alright, so just quickly get these hooked up. Um, again, like I usually do, I'm going to come back and actually encase this with hot glue, so I'm just going to hook this up temporarily just to show you. So our centre leg is going to be ground, so we hook our uh, black wire up to that. 
Um, in my case, this out leg here is red. And the last one is green. Okay, so that's that all hooked up. Now we can quickly uh, reassemble it and give it all a bit of a test. Okay, right, so now we'll give these uh, satins a bit of a test here. So, um, you can see our power light is red, so that means it's in uh, Japanese mode. Okay, now if we just look at the screen here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press this just for a second, and you'll, if, you'll see with a one second press, it actually changes between. 50 and 60 hertz, okay? So just a slightly longer press and that gets it to change it. If you give it a very quick press, um, the reset, well the machine will just reset. So the reset still works, you just gotta be fast about it. Okay, and if you hold it down, you'll see that this light starts changing. So green, orange, red. Now, green is European, orange is American, and red is Japanese, so. We're going to start off with a uh, Japanese game. So you'll see that um, the machine actually resets automatically and puts itself into the right region. And uh, very nicely been sent a copy of layer section to give this a bit of a test with. So as you can see, this is a, yeah, that's definitely a Japanese title. Okay, so. I shall just Nicely pop that in there. That's red, so we're good to go. So I should be able to shut the lid. Start application, fantastic. So uh, go. Awesome, okay, so you can see that's running. So what we'll do, yep, there we go. I know someone's gonna really like playing that. <laughs> anyway, um, right, pop the lid. Carefully take that out. Okay, not in quite as good a condition. Sega really, oh man, this has seen some better days. But it's a good one for, um, testing out discs. Oh look at the state of it, it's disgusting. Anyway, <laughs> um, I actually got like 500 copies of this free with all the different machines I've brought and um, they've all been in various sort of wrecked conditions but anyway, side note, so close the lid, we're still red so that's going to come up and say incorrect format or well, this disc is not suitable, sorry. Cartridge unsuitable for this system, which is incredible because it's not a cartridge, but oh well. So, we'll hold our button down. Green, that's European. And when it switches back to European, you'll see it actually puts it back to 50 hertz automatically. And when it um, goes to 60 hertz for Japanese and for USA systems. But you know, you can manually change it. I'd be surprised if this disc even, oh yeah, there you go. So um, as you can see guys, that's how it works. Um, I'm sorry the um, tutorial wasn't more in depth, but um, as I said, I, it's, it's not really in my expect a lot of you guys to probably have a crack at. Um, but look, if you do, um, it's really awesome. And if you want some help with it, please just get in touch. It's no trouble at all. So uh, as usual, thanks for watching guys, and uh, we'll see you again soon.